Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Hello everyone and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater and I am the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. In previous weeks when we were looking at equivalence, we were looking at the idea of, the, uh, of equal but not the same. And that's kind of what we're looking at for equivalence. The way that I explained it uh, last week was this idea of uh, using math. I'm not going to do that again really quickly with this idea that um, you can have 1 plus 1, which we know equals 2, and that they equal each other, but that they're not the same, right? There was a, there, this, look at all these marks, just not even just for math, but look at this mark by itself, this squiggly line, right? There's no squiggly lines on this side of the uh, of the equal sign, this sign doesn't have this side doesn't have any pluses on it, but we know that it's equal. So it's equal, but it's not the same thing. It looks different. It has um, different elements to it. How about this? What if I was to take a pink marker and go like this? Well, even that, that's, it's equal, but it's not the same because I changed the color. You don't have to change a lot of things when you're exploring equivalence. It's the idea of if you change what, one thing and then ask yourself what would happen, that's exploring uh, equivalence. If you draw a picture that you really, really like, you could frame it, you could put it up on the wall, or you could give it away. Or, or and, you could take another piece of paper and you could try and draw it again. Even if you got really, really close, it'll probably still be a little bit different. It might be equal as far as the amount of time that you spent, spent exploring it. It might be equal in that that you use the same um, materials. Maybe you use pencil the first time, maybe you use, use pencil the second time. But even you, the person who is drawing, is going to be different because you got a little bit older. Or maybe you drew it in a different location. Or maybe you drew it on a different piece of paper. And then you can look at those two pieces and go, what's different? What's the same? And see what you can see. So that's kind of, again, another introduction to equivalence. Lots of ways we can explore it, but this week, for the last week, what I thought we would do is we would explore this idea of sound and movement. And still being at my drawing table, I'm going to try and explore those ideas, but with um, a piece of paper. 
and some mark making tools. So remember if you well remember if you've been here before, but if this is your first time, we at Explorers, we love recycled paper. It does not have to be clean new paper because everything that we're trying today is not for keeps. And so I have some paper that um, I used on my cutting board and I cut through it accidentally and it was actually um, paper that had already been printed on and was in my recycling bin. So these pieces of paper are great for what we're going to be trying today because when I'm all finished I can put this back in the recycling bin. I remember I was telling you I was cutting before and these papers got cut. Well, these were also pieces of paper that were left over when, uh, when I was all done. And so I grabbed them before I put them in the recycling bin because I thought these might also be fun to play with uh, while we were exploring equivalents. Because when I saw them, they reminded me of piano keys. And so, since we're going to be exploring sound and movement today, I thought I would use this paper to see what we could do. So I'm going to lay these out just like a keyboard. So these long strips of paper. I'm laying out beside each other, just like the white keys, the bottom, bottom part of a keyboard. I'm just going to lay them all out. You don't have to have strips of paper to be exploring. This is just one way that we could do it. Um, you could also rip your own pieces of paper you have explored with us before, you know that one of my favorite things to do is to rip paper. What I'm going to do first though, I'm going to take one of my markers and I'm just going to really quickly make some black keys just like a piano. I'm just going to color in some of these white strips real fast. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just, we're just playing, just trying things out. How many of these do I need? I think I need, I'm going to do two more. You don't have to use black and white as well. If you wanted to also make a little keyboard, um, you could use whatever color strips of paper that you wanted. You could use you could all use all white if you wanted. Um, but I had my markers here, so I thought I would do that. Also, for me, when I'm leading uh, these workshops, more contrast, more difference between the strips of paper means that it's a little bit easier to see on the screen. Okay, real fast, I colored in four strips, black paper, and I said my favorite word earlier, which was rip. So I'm gonna rip these in half so I have more black keys. And then what I did was I, I put down an octave, which was eight white keys. If you've ever played a piano or if you've ever played an instrument before, um, eight notes are a octave. That's the distance between the first and the last note in this set here. Okay, so piano. Usually there is a black key here. There's a black key here. There's a black key here. I think I'm gonna have too many. That's okay. Ta da! And so now I have an octave. If you had more strips of paper, you could keep going. You could make yourself an entire keyboard. You could build yourself a guitar. You could do anything. Okay, so we were talking about sound and movement equivalents. So I made myself a piano. I didn't need to have 
I don't have to have music. I don't actually have to have a full piano in my studio to be able to make an equivalent. This is a version of a piano. I can play each one of these keys, just like a piano. Maybe it's gonna make, not gonna make noise, but there are people who could play uh, a normal piano and not hear sound. So it's basically the same same thing it's just it's just a little bit different right it's um the same but sorry it's equal but it's not the same if uh if you can sing along if you have uh, the ability to uh, sing a scale you could do that do re mi fa so la ti do c d e f g a b c do you hear those uh, those words I said there? C, D, E. Whoops. <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect. Here. F, G, A, B, C. There we go. I also said Do. Re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. So check it out. Already, I've got some equivalents. I've got the um, the the notes based on the well-tempered clavier C D E F G A B C. That's the octave C to C. But I also have the um, the syllables do re mi fa so la ti do so a equivalent of c is do an equivalent of a is la another equivalent of c or do is c i think that's right no so it's c, c yeah do 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 re mi fa so la ti do yeah i think that's right um so i can make a sound i can sing it i can say it i can say it in multiple ways I could touch the keys. And so this is what I mean by equivalence. I don't need a fancy piano to play a piano. I don't need actual music to start playing around with equivalence of uh, sound and music when I'm exploring um, some of my drawing tools. What if we decided to assign colors to each one of these sounds. All right, so check it out, my two, my two C's there. I used red for both of them, but I used a different marker. And when I wrote these out, I didn't draw them so that they were super close to, to the same. So they're both C's and they both say Do, but my Do over here, the O is kind of bigger. And for this one over here, the O is kind of further apart than the D over there. They're equal, but they're not the same. Little tiny differences. If somebody else was coming up to this and didn't see my two markers, they might actually think that it was um, that it was the same marker, but you know the difference. And you get to ask yourself um, those questions. What's different? Okay, so now we've got these colors here. So instead of C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. What if instead it's uh, red, purple, blue, green, orange, yellow, pink, red? <laughs> 
Maybe it's a cat singing along. You get to explore all of these, these equivalents by playing and seeing what happens when you do these things. What if instead, what we were gonna do is now we were going to go, we want to play a rainbow. And a rainbow, <laughs> my cat is singing in the background. <laughs> so a rainbow goes red, orange, yellow, green, And then usually it goes indigo and then violet or purple. But I'm going to go purple and then I'm going to go pink this week because these are the markers that I have. So there we go. So instead of having a, um, a score or some uh, sheet music, instead I'm going to play a rainbow. And I'm going to go C, G, A, F, E, uh, D, B. I don't know if I actually can sing that out. So, do, do, re, do, re, mi, fa, so, do, so. Is that right? Do, re, mi, fa, so, do, so, la, so, fa, mi, re, ti, do. Is that right? I think so. Yeah. Oh no, I went re, re, t, and then just t because it's by itself. And so I sang a rainbow based on the colors that we put on a keyboard that wasn't actually a keyboard, there, there were pieces of paper. So this is what I mean when I'm talking about getting to explore equivalents. We take one thing and we go, let's change well, let's change one thing and see what happens. What can we do that we couldn't do before? Sure, uh, if you had permission, maybe you have some stickers um, that you could put on a keyboard, on an actual piano, you could do this. You could put the different colors on there and then you could have somebody color a picture or color a line of different colors and then you could play the, um, the colors using a real keyboard. But this is another way of doing it. You could also change this up because this isn't a real keyboard. We then get the opportunity to go, okay, well, I'm gonna change these now. I'm going to go and take my keyboard. And now there's strips of paper that were a piano. There we go. And now they're colors and letters. And so now we're going to go from this piano, don't need to have our black keys anymore because now they're just strips of paper and rainbow, but now they're letters. And what do the letters say for a rainbow? C, G, A, F, E, D, B, C. Did you say that word? Kagafedus. <laughs> you could um, make a code out of these different, um, these different letters. You could just look at the letters by themselves and see if you can spell something with it. Uh, I'm going to go B A D. Bad. Mm. Can't really say, uh, what about bed? There we go, bed. Bed. And then, calf. Okay. 
or how about decaf? That's decaffeinated, so it doesn't have caffeine in it. Decaf. There's a word. Okay, so now what we did was we spelled, we spelled a word, and again, uh, so, do, re, do, re, mi, re, do, <laughs> do, re, mi, re, mi, do, la, no, la, fa, I think that's right. <laughs> If you had another keyboard or you could ask the internet what the notes are as you go along, you could play um, different words that you can spell out with the, the, the letters of the scale. You also don't have to just use these letters from the scale, right? So I went C, D, E, F, F, G, a, B, C. I did that because that's uh, a C octave on an actual um, piano. And so I was trying to make an equivalent of that piano. But if we wanted to go even further and see what happens, well, why don't we now just make up other letters? So instead we go, how about part of the alphabet? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. And then you sing the alphabet. So A, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Oh, wait, G. <laughs> G, H is what I meant to say. H. Let's do that again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And then you could move these around and make a different word out of the... Um, out of these letters, and then you could sing or play uh, based on the words that you built out of it. So just taking and changing that one little thing, we get to explore all new things um, uh, by exploring equivalents. So same or, or equal, but not the same. So this is one way that we could explore, and I just wanted to try out sound because I had these cool strips but I asked Lily if she would help me for this week's um, equivalents. And so what she did was, uh, because Lily is a dancer, she did some dances for me in her backyard. And so what I thought I would do is, because I am not a dancer, I am a visual artist, which means that I, I, um, I do things usually on pieces of paper and, um, 2D environments. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do an equivalent of her dance movement. And so first I'm just going to watch and draw and then um, I'll see, I'll, I'll look to see what happened. I'm not really going to think too much about it. I'm just going to react to what I see Lily doing. So when I originally saw Lily standing up straight, I drew a line for her body, for her torso, standing straight. And then she made her arms wide, like a Y. Oh, no, no, she didn't. She first did it like a T. There we go. She went like this. Then she tilted to the side one direction then she tilted to the other side and then this wrist over here moved until her whole body bent over and then she came back up again and so this drawing here that I did is an equivalent of Lily's dance. So here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up. And we're going to look at it again based on Lily's um, dance. I'm going to try to make this bigger. Okay. 
And there you go. So that's my equivalent of Lily's dance. I took her movements and did a, uh, I did a drawing that was my version of Lily's dance. I'm gonna try this again. Take another piece of paper. I'm gonna to go to the next dance. All right, not thinking about it too much. I'm just gonna to react to however Lily moves. Cool. Oh, I want to see that again. There we go. Oh, that was really awesome. So Lily stood straight. And I, I'm not I'm not necessarily going to be able to see or notice all the things that Lily is doing because I'm not a dancer, because I am a visual artist, because I'm an illustrator. And so the things that I'm going to pay attention to are going to be different than say if you are a dancer and also like to draw, you might see things or react to things or notice things that I wouldn't notice. So even though we are both equally drawing the same dance, we might both be using Sharpies, we might both be using a piece of paper, you're going to have a different experience or lived experience than I am and you're going to notice or have a different context than I am. So Lily uh, stood straight and had her arms out to the side again. but then her arm came over as her body twisted. It was kind of curved. And then her leg came across her body and then swept up, which was so cool. And then her arm came, or her arm came over, right? So her leg, her leg swept back, and then her arm came over. Oh, right, and then she brought it back over again. Yeah, I'm gonna watch this again here. So leg, oh yeah, there's, oh, her arm. I want, I think I want this line too. That's where her arm went. You see, I have to watch multiple times. I'm not getting all the information just by watching once. To the side. Oh, and her arm curled over here too. Oh, so cool. want a line over here where her arm curls as well. I could probably keep just looking at this one dance over and over again and keep adding to my drawing. Or I could draw multiple drawings for every time I watch to see what else I notice so that it's going to be a little bit different every time. I'm going to play one more video of Lily dancing, but I'm not going to draw this time because I don't, I, uh, I don't want you to see what I would notice. I want to, I want you to see what you would notice, even if you're not drawing, even if you're just watching, you could draw a picture in your head. You could use your fingers. You could move a toy. You could trace the movements with your fingers. There's no wrong way for you to be following along and doing an equivalent, doing your own version of what you see Lily dance. Let's check out her next dance. That was so cool! I wanted to be surprised along with you. I didn't watch any of these um, of Lily's videos. I just asked if she would send some to me so I could be surprised with you. What did you notice? Let's watch one more time. 
My favorite part is when Lily jumps up and her fingers are spread out and they kind of shake. And so instead of drawing the whole movement this time, I'm going to draw um, a, a line as if her body, right? Because her body jumped up in the air. And then there from the side, the lines, but then her really cool fingers. And so obviously this is not what Lily looks like, but this is something that I was feeling and thinking when I saw her move in that way. And so this gets to be my version, oh cool, of Lily's dance. And so Lily also had this, um, this movement with her legs. And there you go. And so this doesn't look like Lily, but it's an it's my equivalent of the movement that she did. And there you go. I'm gonna fold this, put it on top. One more time. Super cool. You could play this with uh, a friend or a sibling or grown up people in your classroom where you get them to make a movement or move or dance or jump and then you have to do a, um, a version on a piece of paper or if you're at the beach you could take um, a stick and draw it in the sand or you could make a movement with your fingers and then have somebody repeat with their own fingers and you could check out what's different so it's all about trying it in just a different way and seeing what you notice. It's kind of like deep looking, but deep looking through another medium using another tool. So we could look and we could list or say or sign all the things that we noticed, or we could express what we notice with our own marks or our own dance or our own colors or our own songs. There are so many ways you can explore equivalence. You can explore equivalence out of anything. Go back to some of your old pictures that you've drawn or pictures that you've taken or dances that you've made. Can you do the same thing, but only slightly different? Thank you so much for joining me this week for our last exploration of equivalence. I had a really great time exploring this subject with you. Like I always like to do, I'm going to leave my camera running while I clean up so that I can respect my space and get all ready for making next week. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you soon.